In the last video, we did something that looked exactly the same, at least on the surface, where we had a cube, and on each side of the cube, we have a, a resistor. Notice that each resistor has the same value R, and you were supposed to find the equivalent resistance. But in the last video, the points that we're interested were, were in the opposite corners, here and here. In this case, we want to find the resistance between these two points. So it's actually a very different problem. Same initial start, but a very different approach in how you're going to solve this problem. How do you find the equivalent resistance between A and B when A and B are are across the corner just on the bottom part of the cube. So it all comes down to finding a way to redraw this circuit and so what we're going to do is first draw the bottom of the circuit first. We're going to take this and turn this into a two-dimensional problem instead of a three-dimensional cube. All right, doing that we get the following. So we have, uh, let's see here, we have B over here, we have A over here, and then we have the four resistors so let's draw those in like that. Here's one, Here's two, here's the third one, and the fourth one. All right, so that's the bottom of the cube. Now notice from A, and from this corner, and from B, and from that corner, we have one resistor going away from that. So we're going to do the same, and let me put B and A in a different location. So let me put A over here, put B over there. So we're going to do the same thing. Now we're going to draw these four resistors, and let me, let me circle them. So this one right there this one right there, this one right there, and this one right there. So we're going to now draw those four resistors, leaving A and B and the other two corners, which are these corners right here. So to do that, we get the following. So we have a resistor going away from B this way, resistor away from this corner this way, resistor this way, and resistor this way. And let me also circle those in red so you can see that those are the very same resistors. Those are the same four resistors like that. Okay, now next, we still have the four at the very top. And notice that they're all connected together, and they're all connected to the ends of these right there. Right, so notice that these are the four corners there, and these are the four corners there. So maybe I will go ahead and circle those in green, like that, and those are the four corners we have over here. So now all we have to do is realize that these other four at the very top simply connect from green to green corner like that. So when we draw them over there, guess what that's going to look like? It's going to look like this. Resistor this way. Oop, I missed this a little bit. Let me redraw this just a little bit. I didn't make this long enough, did I? Let me make this a little bit longer like that. So it'll look a little bit better. Like that. And I'm coming back over this way. So here's my resistor this way. Here's my resistor this way. And here's my resistor this way, and finally my resistor this way. All right, so that is actually the very same problem that we have here, except we now made a two-dimensional instead of a three-dimensional problem. There's still A, and there's still B, and we're trying to find the equivalent resistance between A and B. Now you're saying to yourself, wow, it's only gotten more difficult, hasn't it? But actually, not really. Because normally the way you can look at it is imagine that there's going to be a potential difference between A and B. So maybe A will be at 10 volts, B will be at 0 volts, and so there's a 10 volt differential between the two. And if that's the case, then at the halfway point, the potential should be half of that. So what I can say is, if this was, let's say, 10 volts, 10 volts, and this was 0 volts, so the potential difference between A and B was 10 volts. And since all these resistors are equal, notice going from A to B, following this path, I have to go across this resistor and this resistor. And we know that they all have the same resistance, R. So this is R, this is R, this is R, and this is R. So notice that going from there to there, we should drop half the voltage. And going from there to there, we should drop half the voltage again. So we realize at that point that this should now be at 5 volts, and this corner here should be at 5 volts. Also, if we go from A to B, from A to B via the outside loop like that, notice that we go through one resistor, two resistors, three resistors, four resistors. But when we get to this point right there, the green point right there, that's the exact halfway point from A to B. And notice going from A to green here is exactly the same as going from green back to B. We have a resistor here, resistor there, we have a resistor there, resistor there. There's exact what we call symmetry taking the outside route, that means that this point should be at 5 volts too, and on the other side we have symmetry, that should be at 5 volts too. We now realize that 
this point and this point should be at the same potential, this point and this point should be at the same potential because both points are exactly at the halfway point going from A to B, either taking the inner route or taking the outer route. And if those two points are at the exact same potential, there will be no current flowing from those, between those two points, which means that this resistor just sitting there not really doing anything, if there's no current flowing, we can actually imagine that we can simply eliminate that resistor and eliminate that resistor and it would not make any difference to the circuit whatsoever because that resistor is not doing anything at all. There's no current flowing to it, through that resistor. And if we now redraw the circuit without those two resistors there, we get a very interesting situation. So let's come up here and redraw the circuit. So we still have the four uh, resistors in the inner circuit like that. So we have one there, we have one there, we have one there, and we have one here. This is still A, and this is still B. We still have a resistor coming out from A this way. We still have one coming out from B this way. So now we have a resistor going this way. Notice this is now gone, and we have a resistor over here. And we have a resistor coming this way. This one is now gone, and we have a resistor coming this way. So that's now, again, the very equivalent circuit that we have over here, which is equivalent to what we have over there. Even though we eliminated those two resistors, they weren't doing anything anyway, so they might as well take them out. And now we have a very a problem that we can actually solve, because now going from A to B, I have two parallel paths here, and I have going from A to B, I can come this way, have two resistors coming this way, two resistors here, and I'm coming back through B. So there's actually four paths we can take from A to B. These two are exactly the same, and the other two are exactly the same. So we can now redraw this entire circuit in such a way that it makes a whole lot more sense. So, going from A to B, I have two inner parallel paths. So I can draw them like this. And each inner parallel path has two resistors like that. So this here, and let me circle in red, this right here is exactly the same as what I have over here. This right here. This is exactly the same over there. Okay, everybody see that? All right, now for the other two paths, I can do this. I can draw one going this way through a resistor and draw one going this way through a resistor. So these two right here, let me mark those in green, so this one and this one are those two resistors, which is this one and this one. So now when we get to that point, notice that each one of them branches out. Whoop, there we go. Each one branches out, there we go. And then on the two branches, I have to, when I go from this point to that point, I have to go through two resistors like that. So I can draw that here, one resistor, two resistors, or if I take the other path, one resistor, two resistors like that. And Let's see, I'm running out of colors here. Let me use purple. So these two and these two resistors are these two and these two resistors. Wow, now we're set. So it doesn't matter. I can draw this one on this side or I can draw that side. Makes no difference. It's the exact same circuit. Now I simply have to simplify those circuits. Notice that I can take those two and those two and combine them. I can take those two and those two and combine them. And so my circuit will now look as follows. We can start from A to B, so we have from A to B. I can take those two and combine them. Now notice that each one I have value R, so I combine them, that is 2R. So I have a 2R resistor and a 2R resistor, like that. That's the same portion as what we have here, that's in red. Then I can combine those two and those two, and notice that will give me Coming up here, a resistor this way, then those two that branches out, so I have a single resistor this way, a single resistor this way, comes back together, I have a single resistor this way. Okay, so those become two R's, and those become R's. Okay, so again, colors might help figure out what we just did. So the red resistors now combine to these. The green resistors have not changed, they're still those. And the purple resistors, notice now we combine them and we have this one and this one. All right, now notice that these two, are, these two are in parallel, those two are in parallel and they have the same value. Remember when 
two resistors are in parallel, they have the same value, the equivalent resistance is therefore half that value. So product over the sum, notice we then get the following circuit, we still have A and B, there's A, there's B. Notice that between A and B I now have a single resistor of value R, there we go, value R because that's these two combined make a single resistor. Over here I have a single resistor that's still value R, over here they combine they make a resistor R, and then over there I have another resistor R. So again with color we can see what we still have. These two will combine to form that one. The two green ones are still there, there's this one and that one. And finally, the purple one combines to form a single one of those. And just to make sure that you were following what I was doing, product over the sum, if we're combining two resistors in parallel like this, and they both have the value of 2R, and you want to combine them into a single resistor, product over the sum, R equivalent is equal to 2R times 2R divided by 2R plus 2R, that would be 4R squared divided by 4R. Force cancel out, that cancels out, and that's why we end up with a single R. So just so you can see that I wasn't kidding you. Now finally, notice that these two are on a single branch. Three resistors, all value R combined. That will give me a value of 3R. So the next circuit will be like this, going from A to B. Single resistor R in the middle. And these three resistors combine to form a single 3R resistor. And finally, we combine those into a single resistor going from A to B. And so what is the equivalent of an R and a 3R resistor in parallel? Again, we use the product over the sum rule. And I don't have a lot of room in here, so I'll just kind of sneak it right in there. So R equivalent is going to be the product over the sum between those two. So we have 3R times R divided by 3R plus R, so this will give me 3R squared divided by 4R, that cancels out that, and this gives me 3 quarters R, and that will be finally the equivalent resistance of that entire cube, assuming I want to know the resistance between A and B on the very bottom of the resistor. And that's how you do that.